Tice just needs to really just not start with the high costs, right? He won't mm -hmm. want anything really above four in his deck. Maybe the Ogamance is okay, but anything above that, which is almost half of his deck, uh, he won't really want to see. Whereas this is the opening oh. life he wants. This is, other than arguably being on coin, this is actually a great opening here for Viper. But Tyze's hand is also okay. An armor vendor yeah. buys you a bit of time. A drain soul buys you a bit of time. <laughs> Probably throw the other two away, but I'm not a warlock aficionado. Maybe you, maybe you can keep um, Talon with the fact you've already got a one and a two and you... I a taunt divine shield pretty handy i actually think uh the scorpid is a reasonable keep as well it's a uh, big enough shape to you know mm -hmm. tidy up some of the smaller minions from viper uh, but it's a tough one i think one of the big draws for tice would actually be tamsin at this point because if he can go like tamsin double drained soul or tamsin double school spirits to put some fragments in uh, it would be very powerful but wow how do you like this both players have just great openings right now. This is going to be a good game. Yeah, and Viper, with this opening from Ty's, Viper's got to get it done early because, oh my goodness, Ty's has just got enough stuff to put in the way and enough stuff to gain some health um, that he will go into that mid-game absolutely fine unless Viper finds the absolute maximum damage application here early, even more than usual. Out of time. Nice to have so many options. Well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, even like coin drained soul, although it wouldn't heal, it stops the one two getting buffed. Right. Is an option, but of course the drained soul will negate one swing of the initiate anyway, so I guess that's fine. I was interested to see if Viper was actually going to go for the Felmore, but I think this is too good to pass up, right? Yeah, and I also assume that Tyze isn't playing the armor vendor next turn. Because he would have played that first so that he doesn't draw a soul fragment while on 30 sometimes. Right. Um, that's just a thought, but we shall see. Now he's got so many threes. But he's facing so many. Look at this Hunter decks. You must love this, right? You must love how ridiculous Hunter can be right now. Yeah, I mean, Face Hunter, definitely not my favorite style of Hunter, but it's still one I appreciate because I think it's so decision dense, especially in the early game, that it. It looks e uh, about 100 times easier than it actually is. <laughs> hundred times, yeah. I've always found that with Hunter decks. I played a lot of Face Hunter last meta, and the more you play it, the better you get, as with any deck. But when you play Face Hunter, you don't realize you're getting better until you look at your replays and look at what you did like a month ago. And you're like, why would I ever do that? Well, you just honestly, sort of slowly learn. Even then, Viper traded that initiate into the 1 3. When I think mm -hmm. a lot of the, the average ladder player, let's say, would have probably just gone sweet full damage to face, you know, yeah. you know, and just and just took it and left the minion up. But Viper knows that he will need some level of minion pressure consistently on board. Otherwise, Warlock will be able to just out heal him. Yeah, if you you've got to for each matchup with Hunter, you pick a number. How much damage does my minions need to do this game? Right. Um, you always work with that, and it's different for each matchup, but he'll have a number in his mind that he needs the minions to do before he starts firing quick shots and hero powers and stuff. And to get that minion damage in, you can't give it the board on turn one. You just can't do it. And Tice is just a god. He is literally not drawing any terrible cards here. Or, or like, like I said, nearly half of his deck is five mana or more, and he's not drawing any of those right now. And I just want to actually draw your eyes to these two players' scores, both unbeaten this week. Yep. Which is pretty big. We've not had any player make the finals that lost one at one match in the uh, the rounds earlier on in the group phase. Yeah, I mean, you get a head start if you win your group, if you like, because you get kind of a day off to, to practice. Uh, you know who you're going to play. Well, you've got one of two choices, so you get the whole day to practice that and so on. So winning the group's a bit of an advantage. But yeah, it's nice that... We have two players that are completely unbeaten and with different lineups as well. We start of the yeah. week, I think we saw the lineups and thought, oh, we're going to have six identical players in the three regional finals, but not happening. Yeah, I think Tice might want this Scorpid down now just to give him potentially some options for Tamsin next turn. Decided against it and actually he's like, nope, I'm going to absolutely fill my deck with Soul Fragments right now. And I believe yeah. that puts him onto eight at this second in time. I would give you that. It, it, it smells like eight. I think it's eight 
obviously it goes face. Um, okay. And okay. suddenly, you want those soul fragments even now. Even just that five to face changes so much. Yeah, I mean, as long as the soul fragments don't pop on thirty or I guess twenty nine, uh, you'll take them. Right, because it's still mm -hmm. healing done. You just want them to to be drawn when it actually has a live effect. So Viper's gonna have to map out these turns here, but I think Rhino just makes sense because mana efficiency is incredibly key in a deck like this. Yeah, and the worst thing here for the Hunter is that now Tyz has drawn all of his early cards early. <gasps> a bad card. Finally, a bad one. He's also entitled to draw all of his medium cards, like, now, which will win him the game if he does. Hysteria's pretty big. Yeah. The admission is fine, but I think he might have to go Hysteria. I just hope that your own poison doesn't get the first hit. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You actually want the five fours to hit into each other, right? If it hits into the poison, that's just unlucky bounce. But you can also play Tamsin with it, right? True. Shadow spell. So he can then Hysteria again in the same turn. Oh, and now he has a Soul Shear, which he can hit, use twice as well with Tamsin. If he's not dead... <laughs> we're in the if he's not dead part of this particular stream now. That's a Whatever lot of here, damage. This turn is, is almost certainly a four cost and hero power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you start pressing the button because you're close to killing them. You've done the the minion damage, whatever number he had in his head. He'll be happy that he's done that much damage. Yeah, I guess it's piercing shot because although this is a mediocre piercing shot, you know, like only dealing three, you normally want five. Uh, the scrap shot could actually hit something relevant in the future. And it also the scrap shot won't push damage to face. So yeah, Viper already bringing Tice down to four and no fragments drawn off the top but an armor vendor. This has to be like Tamsin, Soul Share, Soul Share, Armor Vendor. If you think that keeps you alive, he maybe. Oh. There's a world where you have to tap and try and hit two fragments here. You're so low on health suddenly. Oh, wait. No. What if it's just trade, hysteria? Mm. I guess you don't even have to trade, right? It always clears. What if it's just hysteria, Armor Vendor? Goes up to eight, clears the board. Next turn, you can hope. For a fragment, how do you ever win? This is the concern here. Hope like for he, fragments, he has how many? He has seven yeah. soul fragments in there. That's fourteen health. Yeah, and he can double soul share next turn to put what four more in. Yeah, ah, at his serious face, I'll do five. That's how it works, right? Yeah, I think he just plays Armor Vendor and passes this turn, right? Okay. And then next turn he can, like, Tams in, Soul Shear, Soul Shear, tap. One mana off lethal here. So he's just going to scrap shot face and play the Volpatingas, I imagine? Yeah. The hero power. Just yep. adds up. You get to see, he probably gets an extra draw from Quick Shot next turn. Yeah, you have to um, make sure that these um, hero powers do as much as they can. And now Ties is just down to... I've put a million oh. fragments what? in my deck. Can I draw a few? Only one. So he can put four more in and tap this turn, which he just has to, right? That's insane. He's got to hurt himself to try and gain more health. And it's not a great investment, but that's yeah, what he's he, going to have to do. He would end up with ten fragments in. He can kill one four four. So but he would go down to three with ten fragments. But he just has to, right? There's there's literally no other play. Yeah, I think so. I'm just trying to work out if there's some weirdness he can do, but I don't think there is. I think he's just got to do this. Oh, okay, this is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he trades the one three. Puts the other one on one health, so he can't trade. And press that life tap. And there's one. one. So it's paid for itself. Needs more, though. There's a plus two. Oh, only two, though. Seven is not safe. Not. Oh, that's... Is, it, is he played What's two what? Wolfertingers? Or is that always Rhino? Oh, wait, it's just Lethal. What am I on about? The four attacks? Yeah, because we, we both assume... Lethal. 
the full yeah, one was I'm, dead. Yeah. I'm so silly that I just, even though I'd literally just said, oh yeah, you know, put the 4 1 to 1 health so it can't trade. It's like, oh, it can't <laughs> trade, but it can go face. Yes, of course. I'm getting so hyped about what did scavengers draw? What can we get here? Because he obviously could have got Rhino and, and, you know, maybe gone for it that way. Uh, but yeah, we're both very, very silly. It's fine. Sol's not here to shout at us, so it's okay. Uh, but yeah, Viper takes a win with his hunter against the Warlock, and you saw. Even though Tice had a pretty great early game, honestly, Viper had, you know, an, an equal early game, I'd say. He had a good hand as well, and it was just too much too quickly there for, for Tice to handle. But the difference is that when the Warlock gets a good start, it's supposed to have a chance. Uh, when the, the Hunter's always going to get a good start because everything costs one and two anyway, kind of. But he drew all of the best cards. But because he didn't rip enough of the fragments, he just never had a chance. Mm. It's so yeah, weird, but you can see if he'd hit four or five fragments, that game was going to go the other way. Yeah, there was some... Uh, yeah, I mean, there wasn't even that other draws. I guess, like, Ogamancer would have been a big deal if he could have just about got there, maybe, with it, because obviously Hunter does play a lot of spells. Uh, but yeah, it was just very, very tough. He drew two out of ten fragments, I think. Uh, in the list there. Oh no, he only used one, you know, the Soul Shear, yeah. So he, um, he, you can argue whether that was unlucky or not, but I think Tice had a really good hand and it just wasn't enough anyway. So a uh, good game there for Viper, gets game number one and he's Hunter out of the way. And that leaves him, believe it or not, Lorinda, with Paladin and Mage. Not a bad spot to be left with in the, you know, the finals of week one of Grandmasters. Yeah, after all the talk we've given about, look at this lineup, it's reasonably unique, it's quite aggressive, it's different. He's got Paladin and Mage. <laughs> it's like, it's not that different after all. Now he's done the work with the um, the lesser parts. One getting banned, which means it's done its job straight away. And the other one just you know sweeping through that Warlock. He's in a great spot now because now Tyzer's Warlock has got to find a win against one of these two decks. Yeah, and Viper running a very interesting list here, or about as interesting as it gets, where it's very three drop heavy, where there's double combustion and double netherwind portal, I believe, in here. Let me just triple check. Uh, oh, wait. There's one portal, two combustion. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was looking at Tice's. That was Tice's list we saw first. Got you. Ignore me. Tice's list was very important because there's double netherwind portal, double combustion, but then no ring toss, which is, you know, what I would deem at least a one of as a standard in the list. Whereas Viper's list now, apologies for my confusion, it has that one ring toss to double combustion, but only one nether win. So less flexible there for Tice to get, say, ice barriers uh, available to him there from the ring toss. But Viper has a more standard list there. So nothing too crazy from either player, but just interesting that Tice seems to favor the double nether wind instead of one and one. In hindsight, and this is very easy to say when you've watched a million games of Hearthstone in the format this weekend, I think maybe bringing the Ice Barrier would be a better move, because why are they leaving your mage up? Right, of course. <laughs> so they're leaving your mage up because they're going to hit you in the face, so let's get some Ice Barriers down. Uh, I, again, very I easy say to say that. that. Yeah, I will say that Netherwind, I, I, I do keep saying this, but I feel like Netherwind is potentially a good anti-aggro tool anyway, because all the decks you're expecting to face are spell heavy the majority of the time and just right. in a kind of free minion uh, is very, very nice. But yeah, ice bar I think one ice barrier at minimum is a, is a good call for the, for this week's meta. But let's see how it goes as we're going to get a uh, potentially silly, potentially long, potentially very short uh, mage mirror here, Lorinda. <sighs> I felt so sorry for Fled last night. He got all the way to game number five, and then he just got maged by Monsanto. Just yeah, got absolutely turn five maged. Nothing you can do about it. Might be all. maging Viper here as well as an on-curve deck of lunacy is probably what he's after. Yeah, that seems a reasonable call. Um, no reason to be concerned that he's getting ten drops instead of nine drops. Yeah, it looks absolutely fine to me. So... Viper not without chances, though. He's got good removal spells. He's got some minions. You can cope for a while, depending how ridiculous the lunacy goes, which obviously we know it goes it goes quite ridiculous quite often. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to hear all the opinions on this turn from Tice of how you play turn one when you have coin lunacy. Because on one hand, obviously he doesn't have card draw, which is the, the big drawback. But on one hand, if you coin lunacy, it's you get it out early, right? So it's one better card in your deck 
than you would if you didn't coin it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you can't draw those cards anyway, you've kind of just used up the coin to then ping next turn, potentially. So I do understand, you know, maybe every side of this argument, and it'll be very interesting to see if that develops more. Yeah, um, although this meta may never happen ever again anyway, so there may not be an argument. We'll, we'll be arguing about something else stupid next week, like mm. which four drops should you play in Paladin when we all know that Kazakas is the only four drop worth playing? <laughs> or, or which of the 20 different good road decks you actually play? Yeah, right. Um, that's going to be interesting in its own right, but back to this one, I guess. Viper is compiling the way you beat a Lunacy, which is to save all of your burn. Um, that is the one way when your opponent gets Lunacy, if you save your burn and do things right, you can get them, especially as he's going to be able to reduce them. Getting a little bit scary though, because this uh, Gamekeeper actually... Is it Gamekeeper or Game Master? I can't remember. It allowed him to play that Netherwind portal, and then he has Arbor up for two mana. If the Netherwind portal doesn't get proc, he has the Condras to double up on 4-4s, four and then Arbor up. Like, things start to get so, so silly if Tice can keep hold of this what board. Absolutely, yeah. If they start hitting you with minions and they've lunacy, then the the bad spells when you lunacy are the ones that buff minions, right? And if you've got a board, they're not bad spells anymore. And suddenly it's all over because every single lunacy card is in play. So Viper will not want to be using any of this burn on keeping the board clear, but at some point he might have to. But for now, he's got brain freezes and such like. He should be okay for a turn or two. Maybe. Hmm. This is where I'd apply my logic of when in doubt, just Apex is blast face. <laughs> if in doubt, just press whatever button damages the opponent. Raven, 2015 to 2021. Yeah, I'm well here, I know it's not, it's not too bad. It's not worked out too bad for me. It's done well for you, I must admit. You have successfully hit people in the face for many, many years. Yeah, this Condra is right. a really nice deal here. Yeah. And this oh, Celestial, I talked a lot about this in a previous match where we saw it, where what Tice, the, the way Tice will make the Celestial potentially very good is if he builds a board, then Celestials, and then there's just no great way for Viper right. to remove it for one card, one mana. So, but you need the board first. You don't want to just Celestial it before you can, you know, really have a dangerous board. But yeah, now he's challenging Viper to, you know, Start using up burn. Now, as it happens, Viper should be able to clear the board without using any of his burn, but it's just going to start getting awkward for him. Um, but if he doesn't, like you say, Celestial, GG. Because you need to play multiple ter things in a turn to clear these sort of boards up. Spring water is so, so ridiculous when um, when everything's reduced. Mm. Really tough turn, though, because one is Viper. I imagine in, in his head, he'll be just thinking, I am so far behind. And even if I clear some of this, what is coming next? You know, he's, he's uh, almost certainly aware that that secret's n a Netherwind, right? It's the only secret that Tice actually plays. So he'll have full knowledge of that Netherwind portal as well. So he knows if he Apexis Blast that a minion will also be spawned this turn. Yeah. Okay, 4-6, he'll take that. Yeah, this is probably enough to to prevent himself from getting druided by the mage opponent. Oh, oh dear, skull! Just, just, just hellfire. It's fine. Go face. Well, trade maybe one. Go face. Hellfire. Skull. Go. I would have already locked in this turn if I was. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be in the finals uh, if if I played like I would normally. But still. I don't think there's a world in which Tice cannot skull this turn. It is way too good. Yeah, the only thing that maybe he has to consider, which might have led to the pause before doing the play that I also would have done, is whether you can Celestial and the next turn play two cards, the second one being the skull. Right. And, and then win that way. That That's probably what he just paid a moment to have a quick think about, because, you know, a lot of zero mana guaranteed mega cards from the skull probably also wins the game.
interesting here. All of these have potential upside. Obviously, Thanos just cycling a little bit more. Imprisoned Phoenix is just the most spell damage, but delayed. And Mini Mage definitely isn't too shabby. I've been seeing that picked a lot, just purely because stealth is kind of good right now. I was very interested in that Phoenix because in two turns time, he's going to have a handful of stuff and he might need a cram session. But... Like, our fire stuff, he wants to draw more cards now, oh. figuring that his hand isn't quite good enough. Okay, well, Mini Mage and Thanos is kind of Phoenix. <laughs> yep. Definitely goes for the Apexis Blast just to play reasonable threat on board now, though. Oh, okay. Oh, the my goodness. Now he's nice. really... Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both getting excited, Raven. So, mask? Does it, Could I mean, soul does it do anything? Oh, wait, Soul Mirror Pexis Blast, right? Looks way better. Sure, yeah. Is it better than that, though? Give me what he's going for. Yeah, you can see the draw from the Thanos first. Oh, now he can just ping initiation? Purely because the. Apexis Blast can go face, right? So you just initiate instead. Yeah, and you're getting that sense that Viper's trying to race you here, so you don't really want to blast the 5-5 five five if you can possibly help it. I'm with you, I think, here. Works against me. That's where he's going to go with it. It makes sense. One, one spell can go face, one spell can't, so use the one that can't. Oh my goodness, it's so close. So Viper can go for a... Not really a setup turn, because he just doesn't have the total damage. But he has plenty of devolving missiles, brain freeze. Yep. He could get Solarin down, get his Netherwind portal down to help as well. Yeah, you absolutely don't mind drawing a Solarian. It's not ideal, but when you're going to have your opponent so low, it might just be a, a fairly straightforward win if you did draw parts two of Solarian. Sounds like a bad mini series. Hmm. He's just trying to work out if he's ever going to need his brain freeze, whether he should evolve again, all that sort of stuff. I think I like him holding the second evolve purely because just because you've seen these minions doesn't mean that's the end, right? Oh, you, you've got to be oh. able, a little bit of Nag Grand Slam and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe he's counting his outs because he can just go slurry and fireball, fireball and just not die and then top deck and out. But that's, you know, mm. he can do that at any time, but that, that might save him a turn in some world. So yeah. I think he was counting his outs there and then went for the normal play afterwards. Well, the good thing here is, for me, clearing the board, getting Netherwind, like Viper will hope he ends the turn or this turn of Tysis ends with a minion on board. And then he gets to use that minion plus the Solarian fireballs to win the game, right? Yeah. That's the plan. That is indeed the plan. Okay, so I think this is the turn, right? Is this the turn? Oh, he doesn't have the mana. Oh, if he had eight mana, I think like the Conjurers plus Celestial would have been the way forward there. This is a decent minion. Ice can gain armor though, with Rancor. I'm not allowed to commentate on that card. Um, he can. With Consecrate, Ping, Ranker will gain him two armor. He's going to work out, like, break points and stuff, hasn't he? Because yeah. we can see them, but he can't. Well, he knows there's a spell damage minion in hand, right? He knows there's uh, something there from studies. Okay. I mean, he has to do this, right? <gasps> oh, he's it's trying to turn lethal. This blast. Oh, okay, okay, okay. How much damage is there here? That, oh, that's got to be it, surely. Or is he a mana short? That's 15 if he does it that way. That would be 14, 18. 1, 6, 7. Yeah, he's actually a mana off, right? I think so. The two fireballs are 7 each. That's 14. 
The minion on the board is four. That's 18. And the ping is two mana, and he only has one. Oh, so close. Mask of Cthulhu is less damage for your six mana, so that's not even a consideration. If you don't play the Astromancer, you get the ping, you don't get the spell damage, so that's also not enough. What to do? What to do? He can't draw any cards. I think that Tyze has locked it down. He can't gain health. So I think here the correct play is Viper to like mask ping this turn uh, or something mask. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, and then next turn he has the flexibility of these fireballs to finish the game. But we can see Tyce did make the correct decision or at least the decision that worked, right? Uh, with the uh, not going for the ping on the minion, going for the ping on the face and a Pexis Blast into hero power is gonna end the game. And even this series at one and one, Tyce taking the mage out in the mage mirror. Yep, and Viper knew, like, he, he gave the sort of nod of, obviously, you know, he's played a million games of Hearthstone in his life, he knows that if your opponent is really good and leaves you on six with that much mana, they're killing you next turn. But what else could he do? He, he did what he could and just hope that on this occasion, you know, Ties might have been played for top deck or something. Very, very close. Um, and we're seeing that over and over again. The person who gets the lunacy is favoured, but not by as much as maybe your instincts would tell you. Well, the, the person who hasn't got the Lunacy does have options. Especially when you consider one of the best things you can get early from Lunacy is Skull, right? And Tice got it. So that was very, very powerful indeed. The Arbor up pushed some damage too. Uh, you know, one thing you look back on, and this is me completely not saying Viper misplayed or anything due to this, but what you would do, or at least what I would do in the situation, is go back in, in the game and see if Viper could have fireballed face at any given point, right? And right. I know that's very easy to say now, and I, like I said, I'm not questioning the way he approached this, but if he could have closed in a fireball, then it would have paid off for him. But honestly, I don't think there was a, um, there was a, a real good moment for him to do so. I think there was a turn that I mentioned that, hey, he could now just go for it and try and top deck. Now, I'm not saying that was right, but there was a turn where he could have got them in. Um, hope he doesn't die. Uh, he'd have to have left minions up. And then, of course, the mask is not as good. But there was a turn where maybe he could have gone for it, but I think he would have lost because he would have been beaten up by minions if he had gone that way, I think. Yeah, I mean, there was survival of the fittest in hand for Tyus, right? So if any minions were left up, that one survival pushes eight, or I think it was two minions were left up at the time, like eight extra damage, it which was, would have, yeah. which would have nullified the game anyway so like i said not you know overly judging what viper did in that game it's just interesting in games that close to like rewind and just go huh i wonder what would have happened if this was done instead but like i said it does even this series up one and one and if you're just tuning in this is the finals of week one of the european grandmasters tice versus viper going to be in game number three it's going to be the warlock versus the mage now yeah and i don't know this is the reason I... TJ talks about the amount of healing in the Warlock, but I look at the amount of nonsense in the Mage. And look at this hand, Raven. I can't even do an intro because I'm... Ah. Yeah, ah. so these are the two best cards you can get as Mage in your opening mulligan. Uh, and also, Viper being on coin means he can, like, coin Lunacy Encanters, which is pretty crazy. And outside of situations like this, I, I completely understand where TJ's coming from as I think Warlock has a certain level of game against Mage because it's they're, they're pretty difficult to burn down. And also, in the late game, one, Mage can hit Fatigue very quickly because they generally want, especially post-Lunacy, draw a ton of cards. And also, if you Ticketus to accelerate that, then Mage ends up having like six cards in hand they've got to win the game with, and if they can't, they lose. So th there is that situation there, and I do understand the healing is a big factor, but that kind of all goes out the window when Viper gets a draw like this. Yep, just to point out, because I had um, a friend ask me this morning how this works, like, do you Lunacy or Encanters flow first? Well, the default is you Lunacy first and make the cards cheaper. But in this tournament, you will have seen a lot of the time people playing the Encanters first and then playing their Lunacy afterwards. Because the Mages being left up means there's a lot of aggressive decks, which means you want to get the 9-mana um, Librum to heal yourself right. back up for very cheap, for 6-mana. But this isn't an aggressive deck, so this is the more standard, oh. let's get the Lunacy played and let the Lunacy begin! Yeah, okay, so even though this is maybe way too early to call, but Glide could actually really mess Tice up. Yes. 
If Viper can cast it in Outcast, of course. Yeah, although it it gets a bit hard as Mage to have a hand that's empty enough that you want to ever glide. But I do get what you mean. You, you, it's sort of a combo deck you're playing against to some degree. And, you know, killing their hand is going to be a big deal. Viper's drawing all the minion stuff, and that's not what you want. This is what Lunacy sometimes does to you. Glowfly looks okay here. Yeah. Even if, even if it's a school spirits, then Holy Nova cleans it up, right? Because it'll hit the friendly minion, the Tyus's minions too. Looks like he's going to Glowfly because he's keeping the two mana available and choosing not to oh. intellect. Well, that's the plan. You're loving this, aren't you? You are just loving this week of grand and the grand slams. Your your card you never stopped talking about. I'd love it more if it was actually being played in Hunter, uh, but yeah. <laughs> We all laughed at Raven last year. And the Grand Slam is a closing card. Well, we've seen it used as a closing card once or twice this week, or a hundred times. Raven right as always, somehow. Yeah. I just keep saying the same thing, and eventually I'm likely to be correct. <laughs> is that the trick? Yeah. I should try this. Ooh, I changed my wrong attitudes. That's, that's, yeah. Viper going for more draw. He does have this Holy Nova to just clean this board and just a casual zero mana fireball. Why not? <laughs> Next turn he has Nagrand Slam. Oh. Yeah, and then he can get rid of all the. This is where the glide might end up being quite good, actually. He can get rid of all the sort of garbage and just try again. He don't really no, want right to now, if he, animals. If he Nagrand Slams this turn, double fireball glide next turn, for example. Is yeah. That, yeah, seems good. Might, that might just be lethal, depending on how the game plays out, but... Not you. Also a fair point, yep. Imagine being scared of an ogre when you have Nagran Slam to answer it. <sighs> just make sure they will go to the right places. Three of them into the ogre, one into the 2-2, two -two. off you go. Game over. Uh, you could just assassinate, right? No, no. Okay, one, two, two. Tries. He can even just double. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say he can even just kill off this minion in any manner of way he wants and just go nag grand slam. Is this lethal? Yeah. No. Twenty-one, but... one, so it's close. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And he's got glide in hand, and he's now just emptied out all that rubbish stuff, so he doesn't have to shuffle it back in if it ever came to that, which it won't, because he's got lethal next turn, and ties won't stop it. <laughs> Ah, Tice's face. The face of someone who knows they are dead to lose him, age. Yeah, good luck with this hysteria. I'm not quite sure how you kill 73 things with it, but... And heal, because there's double fireball in hand. Yeah. He's giving it a go. Yeah, it's not going to be enough, right? If anything lives, uh, that's just game, right? Double yeah, fireball going to clean no. this one up, and uh, Tice got lunacy. That's uh, pretty simple of this one. Viper got the good end of the stick with the early lunacy, the encounters flow, and then getting into that Nagran slam, which for me is easily the, the best single card that you can get. Absolutely. I mean, for a while, people were playing double flame strike just to get the fourth Nagran slam. Uh, they've calmed down a little bit on that now because they've realised that sometimes you actually have to win with the cards you put in your deck, which, who knew? That's a concept. But, um, yeah, for a while, it's just like, how many of the Grand Slams can I get? How quickly can I get one? Can I just combo kill my opponents every single turn on turn six? And the answer was, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the discussion is four, seven drops versus three in Mage right now. And the thing, I think Salt was saying this on Friday, where, like, Flame Strike is a good card. Like seven mana, deal five to the board. That five is very, very relevant. Uh, but yeah, th there are certain instances where you can make that cut somewhere. So you know, we'll see how it continues or not. Maybe after the nerfs, we'll, we'll see about that next week. But yeah, yeah just, five uh, is the key number right now. Yeah. Getting rid of you know the, the postman and all that stuff. It's just the exact right number. Just a bit of a null game there to an extent on Tice's side of the board. But that's why people bring in Mage. And, you know, if you're not going to ban it, you have to accept that a certain amount of the time you're against Mage, they will lunacy you and you will likely lose. Uh, but it does mean that Tice is by no means out of this series yet, but is in a tough spot because Viper only has his Paladin left over. But Tice, on the other hand, is going to have at least one good matchup, in my opinion, Lorinda. And I think this kind of rogue does quite well versus Paladin.
Yeah, and we're seeing it more and more. The more the player has played, the more well-known they are, the more practiced they are, the more we expect that player to do well, the better this is for the Rogue. At the very, very top level, we are seeing that the Rogue players find a way to get this done against the Paladin a lot of the time. Whereas even decent legends, you find probably the Paladin is slightly favoured. Yeah, I think really the, the key factor is Paladin has to brute force its way through, like curve out, go pretty wide on the board pretty aggressively and just keep pushing damage. Uh, the second either the Paladin doesn't get a fast opening or Rogue just, you know, has the tools uh, to be able to cut that those minions down. It gets difficult for Paladin to keep up with Rogue when Paladin generally is playing one to two things a turn and then Rogue plays like a hundred. So pretty tough to deal with there. Viper is playing that Librum of Judgment version uh, with that Kazakus as well so he does have access to kind of that get out of jail free card of Librum of Judgment when if all else is going wrong you draw Librum and hit them for 15 and hope that's enough and sometimes that works yeah but this is the full on anti-synergy build that we've all talked about at length this week uh, Librum of Judgment with Kazakus means there's so many ways to turn all your other cards into fours that your Kazakus isn't active as often as you would like on the upside, in my opinion at least, Kazakas is nonsense. It's so good. So you're willing to take that risk. Uh, it's going to be an ongoing debate basically forever. Um, but the judgment is there for the mage, and the mage is already defeated, so or has already won. So kind of a little bit redundant now he's getting into the other games. It's not so great against the rogue. It's I'm just so waiting for the evolution the of this question where someone just plays Cariel and Kazakas. Remember Rivius did that with the three drop that I can't remember the name of from Warlock yeah, and he prince. played an Iron Beak Owl as well. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. Like, it's not like at start of game this effect happens. It's just if there's four drops in your deck when you want to play Kazakus, it won't work. If there's not yeah. four drops in your deck, it will work. So you can just draw Cariel. I think I saw... I, I want to say Orange, I'm probably wrong, but I think I saw Orange play Demon Hunter, where at one point he was playing Kazakus and Ilganoth uh, in the list. It wasn't an OTK Demon Hunter, it was just like a tempo kind of one, yeah. and he was playing both. Uh, I think he cut it pretty quickly, but yeah, it just sort of raised the question that just because it requires there to be no four drops in, if you say it as more of a finishing card, then... You can just draw a fort drop, especially if you end it up putting yep. it in a, a draw heavy deck. But let's get into this one. It's game number four. Tice looks like at a glance there. His opening hand is pretty solid as Rogue. Wait, yeah, he's, got, Vipers. <laughs> he's got choices of the Rogue, so he should be able to respond. But Viper can't believe his own luck. And yeah, he's just top decked into the perfect curve. I would not change a single card in my hand here. I take my chance with this every time. Bit tougher now, obviously. Watch posts are a little, little bit annoying that the hand of a dial draw, of course, is going to get uh, increased by one. But I do like the push into the watch post. I think you have to, otherwise, it's going to just do too much damage well, to your. I don't earth. think you have to, as a general rule. I think because Viper's relying on his next draw or two to be playable, he has to because of what his hand looks like. But if Viper had like weapon and then three drop or four drop this game in his hand instead of, say, the two Aldors. I think he wouldn't have to have necessarily traded the Decision for him here, in case you're wondering what's going on. If he's killing the Octobot, he just plays the hand and trades in goodbye Octobot. Nice. However, if he wants to kill the the post, he kills it first and then probably plays the hand of Udal afterwards because in case he draws something he can play and to keep the casting cost down on that card. That's why he hasn't just wedged this onto the board. Normally in Hearthstone you draw your cards first, of course you want to see what you've got to come but this might be an exception. I think the kill is always on the Octo, right? I think so. Because it's, it, well, I think it's either you pay one more for one of your cards or, or I guess two of your cards technically or they ha have to pay one less for four of theirs. Right. So I think that is how I would work it out in my brain and I would come to the conclusion that you kill the Octo instead. Absolutely agree. I'm just sort of pointing out that normally you would... You might play the hand first to see what you draw and then change your mind based on that. 
but he couldn't do that here in case he made the decision that he wanted to kill the watchtower so he had to sort of work everything out two or three different ways but i he, he came to the same conclusion as you and as me let's for the sake of one mana let's get rid of potentially five mana hmm. so many options one more turn for viper to I want to say survive, but one more turn for him to keep curving nicely, and then he gets into the real meat of the deck with these double truth seekers. Yeah, I do wonder what the plan is here for Tyus. I was even looking at like Neophyte Prize Plunderer, just to just to get stuff on board. So I'm not really sure what this turn does, because the, it's not like it saves the tower, right? It just buys him a turn to start trying to get something from the field contact, I think. It's not very exciting. And Viper is just drawing curve right now. Let me think. Do you like the spell here, Viper, not having access to the Sword of the Fallen? Means that most spell draws are going to be very good considering he has double Librum of Hope in hand. Yeah. They're going to be good as well after two more turns of Truth Seekers. They're going to cost oh, yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> Against Rogue, they're like one of the most important cards, and they're going to cost five. Wait, Viper's a genius. He is? Remember, those two Liberum of Hopes were increased by the watch post. If they weren't, they'd be four, and his Kazakas wouldn't be alive. Ah, absolute perfection. <laughs> and then he draws the, the four drop as well, just to get it out of the deck so that... Yeah, yeah, perfect. Well done. I'm impressed. Not quite sure even what Ties is looking for here from these golems. I mean, they're powerful, so the answer is something that helps. But mm. the more I watch the golems, though, the more I think like the one costs are just better. Uh, like um, the one costs with this hand from Ties, he could have like field contact golem, prize plunder next turn. I will agree that the want costs are better value. I'm not going to argue that point. I heard you and Sotl talking about that, and I agree with the logic. The logic being um, that the the body doesn't really scale with the mana cost, but the you just get more good stuff, right, mm. for one mana on average. But it's in this rogue deck to add a little bit of beef because there's nothing else in your deck apart from, right. like, a Jandis, right? Uh, cargo, maybe. So... You have to get a five just because your deck has nothing in it. It's my opinion. But yes, if you're if you're talking in a random game of Hearthstone with a random class and a random turn, I'd advise you take the wands more often than you probably think you should. Something we saw really cool from Letter in, in match number one of the day, he actually ended up with like two one ones with poison and then shadow stepped it and replayed it with a field contact, so he drew loads of cards and had yep. three 1-1s one with poison that, like, just couldn't really be dealt with. And it's just like, oh, well, these are absolutely horrible minions because I can't kill them off, and these 1-1s one are going to start killing these massive minions on the piled inside. It's cool. Yeah, that's a really good example of why 1 is better than 5 on average, because who cares if it's a 5-5 five five with poison or a 1-1 one one with poison? Right. But just some, you know, for 4 extra mana. Yeah, and Ty's making the choice that reflects what you were talking about, right? Five fives with stealth, it allows them to at least get something done next turn and gives the rogue that sort of, uh, as you put it, beef in the, in the mid game here. So we do see Ty's, you know, on that wavelength, same as you. Yeah, Ty's is on my wavelength, mm -hmm. not the other way around. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take the small victories, Raven. Oh, Blady Cultist, nice. Yeah, just a nice board in general. Obviously, these two 5-5s five are going to to get quite a bit done. But then it's Librams for Hope for Viper, and they are going to be so good going forward. Because Ties has used so much just to be in an okay position here. They cannot stop my work. Job done. And now it's interesting that th these... This true seeker is going to require, you know, a, a five five plus something to uh, get the job done, which is going to be a little bit tricky. There is prize plunder there, which can help out. I even wonder if at this point, Lorinda Tice is considered actually 
bouncing one of these golems with a shadow step. Oh. Uh, Three mana for another two five fives with stealth. Like, he might feel like he needs it because he is. He would love nine. to. He would love to. But, okay, he's going to. I was thinking maybe he'd have to do the prize plunder. But I can see this double lip room of hope. He can't see that. Which is probably skewing my judgment. Because this is really good, but it's really slow. It is, but in a roundabout way, obviously prize plunder with Shadow Step can do a lot of damage, but does it do more than 10? And if so, by how much more? Sure. Because he's effectively gained 10 extra damage by doing that Shadow Step, right? Yeah, it's a lot, and I think you're right. Um, I'm just very biased because I can see these leap rooms are going to be such a nuisance for him. And... Yeah. It looks I actually really wouldn't really have even hated keeping that minion in stealth then. I know that's probably a silly suggestion, but... Uh, I think if you make them, you've got to start getting rid of Viper's stuff. You've got, you've got to pay a nod to the fact that he might just do something pretty disgusting. Now his Librams don't cost anything, so you've got to kill as many minions as possible, I think. Mm. What if, like, um, if Viper is considering here leaving a Penflinger on the board? So he can kill the two two ones and have a two two minion still going face. I doubt it. He'll probably just trade, but might want to have a look at it. But I think the sword is just better. Hmm. Yeah, these secrets could really start coming into play for Viper because he hasn't actually had any activated this game, right? Uh, right, yeah, he just, he just drew the minions. Yeah. yeah, just drew all the stuff. Now it's getting to the point where Tice, although he has a pretty solid board with his two five fives, he's on 20 health. Viper's about to get a Fiery War Axe equipped for free uh, this turn as well as that 2-2. Two, two. Maybe that that's probably why he didn't equip the sword, right? Um, and yeah, Pice has to probably just pop off with this field contact now and, and get through this 9-9. Nine -nine. Too quiet. Yeah, it needs to be really, really good. Um, from where he sat, he may not be in as much trouble as you know we can see he is. So he needs to make sure that he doesn't slip here and become inefficient. He's got to be as efficient as possible. Yeah, and he'll be looking for his prize plunderer number two, or potentially his uh, shadow step as well that's left in the deck, just to be able to push way more damage here to just kill this 9 9 just that little bit easier. Isn't going to get hold And this is the other problem. He's done zero damage to Viper, um, or to zero that is stuck. He's been using all of his resources, you know, and Rogue has a lot of resources, but eventually it does run out. And they've all been put into just trading. Yeah, I do like the Divine Shield, though. Finally. That's very nice. It gets to retain the five attack minion. Yep. Right, if Viper organizes this turn correctly, I think he'll look like he's in a good spot. Mm. Um, but if he does not, he is definitely not safe yet. Yeah, Viper just needs to get this board gone, right? He needs to clear it. And to do that, yeah. he's really just looking for this Libram of Justice, honestly. Like, it's cheap enough to play out and not worry about. He's got Penflinger. He's got the ability to put a few little minions on the board. I think it's super important because I think that if Viper clears this board, he has got through the worst of it because he has access to so much health still. Well, Not like he's going to die from Wicked Stab next turn, right? Yeah, he, he might be scared of Jandis, though. Um, he knows it's not there at the moment, That's but also... Finger, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, yes, he does. I'm not guessing. I can see he has a Penflinger. The problem is, like, there are too many threats. There's the five damage. There's the Penflinger from Tice that he's just left on the board. Yeah. There's the two golems and there's the field contact, which can draw Tice a ton of cards. So, like, all of these things Viper will want to kill, but it looks like he's just prioritizing the pen finger and the 5 5. Viper scares me with how close he pushes this sometimes. <laughs> the rope. You know? Yeah, just, just go two seconds earlier, dude. Like. <laughs> okay. Well. 
he has, for the first time in a while, locked it so that Ty is going to have to actually use resources from hand to get through. Or Cone of Cold. There's the Jandis. Like you say, it's not quite the menace because of the pen flinger, but you know, you, you get a lot of Jandises with very similar minions, so your opponent sometimes has to just guess correctly. Oh, and it's still just a lot of stuff for five mana. You know, mm. it's it's uh, I'm definitely not trying to downsell the power of Jandis, but look at this Shadow Step, Brain Freeze, Prize Plunderer. Oh, <sighs> He could yeah, maybe the five five again. <laughs> yes. No, I actually, I actually really approve this time. I wasn't so sure last time, but this time it's just a lot of stuff. If he doesn't need it to get through the nine nine immediately. The only slight worry is he is going to be fatiguing soon. So I do wonder if Ty should be trading in this uh, field contact soon. Yeah, maybe he should. That's a fair point. Look what he's got left. Only got left those four cards, so two wiki stabs oh. is his out. Yeah, that's kind of maybe bad timing to do that because that looks a little bit yeah, yeah. now because now he's down to... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. There we go. My bad. So, yeah, I'm still no, learning. No, it's fine, it's fine. So, so it's pretty much all the cards here. The wicked stabs don't count, so it is just a field contact one thief is in his deck. That's it. So... Tice has to win this game with the cards he has in hand now. And of course, he's looking great. It's just... He might have pushed it a little bit close for that field contact. Yep, but it looks like he's going to get it absolutely done perfectly. Let me... I was sort of trying to say last night that I didn't feel, think field contact has been good as people have us believe, but it certainly has. I was definitely wrong, unfortunately. It, it's the fact that it's battle cry and combo, and there are so many one costs of those things in the deck that you can just cycle so heavily. Yep, he's gone right the way through two Librum of Hopes this game, and he's got a massive board at the end of it. And take advantage of the sort of one-dimensional nature of the Paladin. Viper, of course, I don't think there's much he can do to help it, but he does know exactly what he's up against. He, he can basically say that Tyze has drawn his deck at this point, so... He does have full information, but it might not be enough to actually save him the game. He is extremely dead. Yeah. He probably did some sort of... He found some out where if the bottom card is exactly Wicked Stab and Ties makes a mistake, maybe he survives. Something like that would have gone through his head, I guess. But yeah, this is the correct order in here. Put all the damage to face, play a card to make sure that it's not Oh My Yog that then directs your board, and then just Wicked Stab twice. That is going to be the game, and that is going to be the series going up to a 2-2 two two score. And shock horror, we're going to a fifth game, Lorinda. This uh, For a three-match day, oh, we, we're definitely putting in the time here as Tice has evened it up, and that looked pretty close. And again, I think you can wind it all the way back down to the Watchtower probably just doing enough, and Viper just not having access to secrets for the majority of the game, because Tice never had to play around the Galloping, never had to play around Avenge or Oh My Yog until obviously the very final turns of the game. And although some of those cards in uh, isolation may not be super strong by themselves, your opponent playing around them makes the turns less efficient. Yeah, the only disruption Viper had is to put down a big Divine Shield taunt. Hmm. That's not really disruption when your opponent can choose how to go about it. It looked to me, I must admit, like it was going to be enough. This is why, at my level, Paladin beats Rogue, because th at my level, the Rogue wouldn't do what Ties did and I'd be fine. Um, um, but when you get to the very best players in the world, they start just using value, they make, you know, divine sh or they make stealthy 5-5s, five they use them efficiently, etc, etc. And suddenly, yeah, the, the fact you've got no versatility, but you're just your clunky guy who sits there saying, come hit me, you know, he gets taken down, however Ties wants to take it down, cleans through, and he won with so much to spare as well, there's like eight cards in hand or whatever. Yeah, now there's another tough matchup here. Viper, of course, going to be on his paladin once again, and Tice on that Warlock. And this is a, uh, again, I'll be interested to know the 
thoughts on this matchup across the board because I think Paladin is very powerful and can push a ton of damage, but it relies on that minion presence on board. And I think that Warlock has that ability, right, to actually just clear up so many boards and, you know, with the Hysteria, School Spirits, and even late game Cascading, Twisting Nether. So all the, t as always with Warlock, all the tools are there. It's just if they have them at the right time. Yeah, and as always, we've got to point out, Warlock is just not as strong a deck as some of the others, but it's got a chance, it's absolutely got a chance, and I shall try not to rant too much about Viper's great hands. Do you keep the Truth Seeker is one of the questions in current Paladin. The answer used to be absolutely yes. I like it. Yeah, I, I like it. I think uh, on the coin, it's definitely worthwhile because it's just a powerful card in itself to coin out. But also, it's something you just want in that mid game. And it's not like Viper's going to get rushed down, right? By right. Warlock. So he'll have the time. Yeah, it might not in some other matchups. But uh, you, if it's close call, you have a look at your matchup. It's like, okay, well, this is a Warlock. <laughs> Who cares? I'm, I'm definitely not killing him in four turns either. It works both ways. Let's just keep a good card in my hand. Because it's such a good card. This might look a little bit sad here because obviously this 1-1 one, one just easily gets farmed by Tyson's minion. But with Sword of the Fallen, it, it is a thing, right? That one damage even helps because this sword is going to be able to kill this off over two turns. Looking at Viper's hand makes me realise just how weird the previous game was. Oh, there's secrets right. and there's librams and, and yeah, yeah. Just none of this stuff existed last game. Almost, it's such a weird game he had. It's on far more normal looking. He's got to find a way to deal with the one three, but you know that's fine. He'll, he'll find ways to do that, so then he can get his truth seeker on the board and start trying to get it over with. Yeah, depending on the secrets he gets here, he could go for Knight into Hero Power, or he could actually end up re-equipping the weapon and using his mana that way. Presses that button. What does the button do? Oh, he gets a 1-1 one, one man. Not seen that all season. Except yeah, right. in the mirror, where they press it all the time. I think Viper, not too happy that he drew an Avenge there and didn't actually get, you know, a, a, a Librum. As the main ones, and I guess the uh, the hand of Adal as well. He could have got. He's unhappy with something there, like at himself. Not he's not unhappy at his draws. He's shaking his head. I think he's had a better idea for last turn. There's probably a world where he could pen fling and bounce it back with a spell and pen fling, and then he doesn't have to make the. One, one, well, like I said, like what, one basic thing I was thinking of was just the. The, the hero power, I think, is only good if he had Avenge active. And because he didn't, I think that... Oh, there, there goes the poison. <laughs> uh, and if he didn't have Avenge active, I actually think spending the mana to re-equip the sword was a little bit better. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And he, I think that's probably what he went with as well. But he also what, just won't be happy that he has two secrets manually in hand and a sword of the fallen. Like, he's nearly out of secrets already. So this sword is going to do close to nothing now. Yeah, that part I was I was comfortable with. It's just the, the the shake of the head didn't look like a oh I'm an unlucky shake of the head. It looked like a oh I'm a silly boy shake of the head. Um, but he's he's got on board now. Everything seems to be going reasonably okay. As, but Ties is also going reasonably okay. He's got into his bigger stuff coming up very soon. Yep, the ogre always a bit of a problem to deal with unless you are really ahead on board. And also the follow-up. He has Lucky Doos that's already corrupted by that ogre, two strongmen, to proc Ticketus. Mm. And not that Ticketus is an overly big deal in this matchup. I think it's just a good six mana, eight, eight, you know, a lot of the time against Paladin. Yeah, I think people do forget that it's still just a good value card, forgetting the, the ability that people find a little bit offensive sometimes, usually when it beats them. Tend to find that's when people usually dislike cards. Unlike me, I just I just love every card ever. I've never complained about a card in my life. <laughs> okay, that was blatantly untrue. Hmm. Bit of a 
tough turn from Ties. He could just school spirits and then play the uh, lucky. That's corrupted, I guess. He's got to be afraid of Avenge, though. That's the real problem. Yeah, he doesn't really have a follow up, does he? Well, the follow up is just strong man, right? Next turn. I mean, he doesn't have a uh, follow up to Avenge, yeah, that he really likes ah, very right. much. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think this works. he can do this way, where he just clears them both. He just ends the the turn with no minions. That's the only part that feels a little... Oh, never mind, sorry. Of course, he has the extra health on the uh, Scorpion. I forgot about that, because <laughs> it got silenced, right? Yeah. Yeah, not too terrible, actually. Good turn from Ties. Kazakus, the yellow border. Ever rare. <laughs> Northwatch Commander with a yellow border. Not so bad. Again, a bit of a tricky turn because nothing really comes together that well. He could just Kazakus weapon and start just pushing damage, but Let it's not that think. much. And I don't even know at this point what he'd look for from Kazakus. <laughs> Now, he has got a choice whether he goes for ones or fives here. Absolutely. Because unlike the rogue, which kind of needs the help, Paladin's got stuff that it doesn't necessarily need the, the big minion. Surprisingly, he threw it down there without having decided which, which casting cost he was going to go for. Because of what you said, if you're going for ones, you're not playing the sword, so... I kind of would have preferred him to work out first whether he was going for wands or whether he was going for swords. Oh, Ticketus is actually going to be corrupted. Don't see it as often yep. as you might think. Also, uh, pretty good for Tice that he gets this Cascading Disaster Corrupted in there as well. That's very, very nice for some of that just big endgame removal. Yeah, this is where the, the Warlock starts to do what it's supposed to do. When you start corrupting everything, it just has this effect of being a Cascading Disaster for your opponents in general, not just one of your cards. It's the whole thing just snowballs into an amazing position for you very, very quickly. It's just you don't usually get there because you have a handful of nine drops and seven drops and stuff. Hmm. I think this could just be like a, a potential like Golem Oh My Yog setup turn. And then have the Librum next turn to clear off anything that Tice might play. The only worry is... Yeah, yeah, I think I actually really like Oh My Yog with the Golems here because it'll stop Twisting Nether, right? Yep. Get a quick look at his deck tracker before this turn as well just to see, you know, what's going on. Just probably quickly checking Tice's deck to make sure things like Twisting Nether were available. He knows they are, but, you know... Sometimes you just double check everything. It's actually a really nice positioning, right? Because now he knows Twisting Nether just can't happen. If Ties, for example, played Ticketus and like did some trades or went face, then Avenge is there. Also, Viper can then have Juggler, uh, sorry, Penflinger with Librum of Justice as well to clear up the Ticketus and anything else that's big. So it's a pretty big deal there, but Hysteria is going to come down. Oh my, Yog is the answer. And what's in the box? Quality. The Yog box. Okay. Oof. Kind of interesting. He'll take that though. That's not going to be much different from Hysteria, and he gets control over things. Yeah, the only weird thing now is if he presses Cascading, he actually creates the horse, right? Which is still right. fine. An amazing horse, for sure. Oh, wait, does it... Wait, what? I'm confused, too. Oh, uh... Checking deck list. Did he not play... Oh no, he only played two cards, right? It was, yeah, it was just Hysteria. I thought he played an additional card. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Avenge does that to a person. 
Yeah, it's um, it's uh, the he, he only played two cards. It's me being stupid. I thought he played something before. Uh, at, sorry, between the hysteria and the cascading. I made the exact same mistake the other night, so I should have learned and didn't because Avenge. So Avenge goes off, and it feels like there's been another card played. Mm. Oh, Viper. Looks like he's going to go for tailing. He was hovering it, but double pen flinger here along with first day. Doesn't look too shabby. Yeah, I think he he paused for that reason and then realized, you know what, does that get there? I, I think he's in the I don't think I ever get there mode already, but I think the pen flinger just doesn't get there. I mean, this doesn't look great, but at least you put some power on the board. And goodbye cards. Two liver of wisdoms in a row. And a hope and a judgment. Oh, so much damage just gone out the window there. Yeah. And Viper might just be in trouble. See what he's got left to play with. Well, a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> There's a hope. But that's it. There's a hope, but there's no hope. Yeah, it, uh, you you would have to imagine, although Titus hasn't got tons of cards in hand, in Viper's spot, he has to be sitting here thinking he needs Titus to have the worst next few draws ever because there's just no damage. The Librum of Wisdoms can't get stacked for Penflingers for the rest of the game because they're gone. There's the, the Librum of Judgment for 15 damage over three swings, gone. Like, oh... That ticket gonna have to go old to school. Spot Tysis finals. <laughs> He's gonna have to go old school. He's gonna have to press the button every turn to generate some sort of resources. But that's just too slow. Must move quickly. So the decision is: Does he want this now, which I think is correct, to just try and get lucky, or does he want to go and press the button every turn? Which one gets there occasionally? And he decided that maybe Tysis' hand has four nothings. I think after seeing some of the removal he's already seen, it is just throw everything at the board, try and uh, penflinger when you can, and, and just hope it works, because he's just lost. He's lost what? Even being conservative, like 25 damage-ish, I'm going to just throw out there as a number, with no yeah, Librams I of Wisdom and no uh, Librams of Judgment, which is 15. And that's not counting the Liadrin, which just gets it all again. Right, right. He's lost double. Whatever you think it is, it's twice that amount. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Tice, playing it safe, knows that with those Ticketus burns, that he can just basically now outlast Viper, who's only on five cards versus Tice's 22. Although eight of those are Soul Fragments. Mm hmm. It's just looking like it's over. I mean, he's just going to kill Viper in two turns time anyway at this rate. He's just got big stuff. Viper's got to trade into it. He can't get there. He can't get the damage into the face. And he's got no resources left. These resources have to trade. The Liadrin won't find him anything of use, really. There is one Libum of Hope left, but we saw Rogue get through that, let alone big Warlock stuff. Reporting for duty. Viper just going to push while he can, and, and this is what I mean, right? He has to just use these pen flingers whenever he can, push as much damage as quickly as possible, because Tice is only on three cards, and I think Viper, to an extent, can ignore his health total, because it just doesn't matter. Yep. Mainly because he has to kill this to get through the taunt, obviously, but the Alex Straza, he can just ignore. Just everything to face. Yeah, yeah, it's just the old, what do you do with Savannah High main? And that's been a constant in Hearthstone. If you can't get rid of it, you ignore it and hope it goes away. And even as well, because, because Tice doesn't, at the moment, or all game, has had a need to proc the Galloping Saviour, then Viper can't even pen flink with the Galloping Saviour either because he can't replay it from hand. Yeah, it's been nicely managed from Tice. We've talked about Viper's hand, of course. He's kind of the one trying to force things to happen, but Tyz has just managed this really, really nicely from start to finish so far. But it's not over yet. All right, no, but four drained souls might have something to say about this. Yeah. That's a lot of health gain. 
Like, is that the point if we just take a quick look again at Viper's deck where they just might... Like, Tice might just kill every single minion he has. Yep. Viper's still hoping for that Librum, then Lady Liadrin, then Librum, and maybe that gets there in some worlds. Just stop draining souls. Behave yourself, Tice. It's crazy, isn't it? So much damage. So much healing. Right. Have you drained enough souls yet? All right, back to 30 again. They're not quite not over. And also Viper lost the Penflinger in that fight, right? So... Yep. You can't even hope to push some damage in that respect, so he's just down to one Penflinger a turn. And the... The horse, the galloping saviour, the second one's never going to trigger because it's just not going to have the time and Ties isn't going to let it. That's a dead card. Penflinger. Never going to do much because most of the things are minions. Liadrin's not going to do much because he burned a load of Librams. The Truthseeker's not going to do much because there's an 8-5 on the board. But... He can kill this 8-5. He can clear the board. Technically, Ties only has an armor vendor to play with. Yeah, but should he kill the 8-5? What if he just taunts up and goes face? <laughs> I mean, that might... He, he has to win or he's going to lose to fatigue anyway, right? Yep, and he has to go fast or he's not even going to get his turn off. Yeah, I think, I think he just plays taunt and goes face. Just chuck everything on the board. I think Viper yep. has to submit to this kind of basic level play. Yeah. It's one of those things where you see the chart with the, the big brain and the small brain on the left and the right, and in the middle is the ones where you don't, where you train. The small brain and the big brain both go face. Yeah. <laughs> Cascading could be nice. Not for now, but for now. Soul Fragment gonna pop again. We put Viper further and further away from committing lethal, but that's probably the worst draw Tice could actually get. Yeah, it's not going to... Uh, it's something. Do anything useful for a turn. Armor, armor. Light well, armor. Tice does have to trade the Slag Strazer in again, and it's now down to one health, which is again, is why I think Viper made the absolute correct decision to just taunt up and go face. The issue now, though, is Leadrin's going to get, like, Hand of a Doll, which... He will draw Librum of Hope, but then if he plays it again, it's just going to fatigue him. Yeah, don't play it again unless it kills your opponent. Would probably be a good plan. I guess it's some, yeah, some extra flings of the pen. And also it means that Liadrian at least gets him two Librum of Hopes now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what he's been waiting for. That's why it's even, like, not only was he unlucky with the Ticketus, but the Liver of Hope being the bottom card has also been, you know, not ideal for him. Because he wants to get this lady, he wants to go Hope, the Advin Hope, over some turns ago. And maybe he'd have had a chance. He still has got, I guess, a chance, but Tyzer's deck is so, so full of healing and threats. Well, lethal set up, I think, because the hand will come back. Mm, not the best draw again for Tice. Gonna wow. go for the It does mean he has two cascading, I think, at least, and the strong men. So this might be the final turn here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's just funny. Ken Ties can shuffle even more fragments and draw more cards with these lucky souls. Picatus, uh, zero mana oh. at eight, sure, why not? And this might just be the final hurrah. There's Draxus as well, which you've got to say five initial armor and the flexibility of the weapon and hero power. Probably does just end this game. Yep. Just a reminder that Jurassic is just a five armor there. When you say that, I'm like, what's Raven talking about? Oh yeah, the card's good now. Or bad, depending which way you use it. But yes. So Viper is feeling it. 
that the double Librum of Hope is the most important. Oh, wait, double? I thought, oh, no, one got burnt. No, one got, he, he burned a one, hope and course, both wisdoms. Of course. It's terrible. Yeah. Of course. So he only has the one Librum of Hope. The Hand of the Dolls, unless it's exact lethal on the turn he plays them, he can't really play unless he just accepts it. Maybe he should play them. Yeah, if he'd burned the cards that didn't get burned and kept the ones that did, Viper might have been in a really good spot. That's why you can't say it's necessarily the Ticketers doing anything particularly good. Mm. But it was the... He just burned all the good stuff. Forcing Ties to play another turn, though. These Hand of Adals will only fatigue him. He's on 32, so that they are playable for damage if anything survives here. But the ability to just plonk a taunt in the way for one turn is going to be huge for Ties. Yeah, and even the Scorpid, right? Uh, Ties knows for a fact that there's no way to kill this Scorpid apart from trading something with it. So he can, like, yep. taunt Scorpid this turn. And he should also have full information as to what the two spells are in hand. Yep. So no pen flingers to worry about, no liberum of justice to worry about. It's just these two minions is basically what Tyus has to kill and survive. He will probably have to do that using his own mind and not a deck track of any sort. But yes, I think he's quite capable of knowing the hand. Well, I think most importantly, he knows that the liberums are burnt. He knows there's no yes. more liberums of hope. Because that's you, you don't forget that Eutychus has burnt Liberum yes. of Wisdom times two and Liberum of Hope, right? You just don't Correct. forget that. So he knows that they're not spells that are in any remote way important. Ty's yeah, he's nodding. He's, he's, he thinks he's, he's safe. He's gone through and, it. And this is a game, like I said, if he knows what the spells are, you can just work out who wins, right? Even even with this hand, even removing Ty's card draw from, from the equation, I think you can work this out. So Viper has to bump into the Divine Shield, trade in a minion, yep. double hand, go face, and then whatever is left over, Ty's just kills next turn, and then he wins in fatigue or with a minion. That is going to be it. Ty's takes the victory here over Viper in the finals of week one of the European Grandmasters. The casual brushing, cleaning the shoulder off there, looking great for Ty's. And honestly, what a statement to make. Ty's just continuing to show that he is basically just an all-time great of Hearthstone. He is not only a veteran of competitive, he's one of the, if not the, most successful Hearthstone players slash streamers of, of all time at the moment. And he's continuing to show that he's still Still got it, taking down Viper in a very close series, mind you, but still going unbeaten in this week's tournament and banking those five points and getting into such a great position to kick off this season of Grandmasters Linda. Yeah, several things I'd like to say there. First, you know, all he has to do is turn up every week to go over half a million dollars in career tournament earnings. Um, he's that close now that just turning up every week will get him over half a million. But I love it when Ties wins. He's still... There are people who don't believe that Ties likes to win in tournaments. There are people that somehow still believe he's not really very good. There are people who somehow still believe he doesn't care. He puts in the time, he cares, and he still comes back and wins time and time again to shut those people up. And he's done it another time during another year at the first yeah. attempt. It is ridiculous, and I love to see Ties do well. And that's it. And taking nothing away from any other players, we had a great top four here.